So welcome to this session today. Um, my name is Dr Philippa Moore. I'm a consultant microbiologist and I work with the Public Health England uh, Primary Care Unit. This is one of the uh, training sessions uh, to talk about antibiotic prescribing and specifically in relation to acute cough. So we're going to start with the clinical scenario. Uh, when you take this back to your surgery, I think you'll find that this is actually one of the more difficult clinical scenarios um, to think about not prescribing. But have to think about this patient uh, yourselves. What would you do? You've got a 45 year old smoker with a week's history of cough, green sputum, temperature is 37.8 degrees. He's had several episodes of bronchitis in the past and he says that antibiotics always help. He wants them. He's got a normal peak flow and he's got scattered coarse creps and wheeze, vesicular breath sounds, uh, but no focal crepitations. So just in your tables and groups, have a think. Who would prescribe antibiotics? What do you think the uh, criteria around that are? Um, and just to have a little bit of a discussion and, and then we'll go on. So I think a lot of you might be tempted to prescribe antibiotics. Um, however, we're going to think about this scenario in a little bit more uh, detail. It's possible it might change if your patient was older or had been in hospital uh, recently. But uh, Public Health England has an antibiotic prescribing implementation tool. It's available via the Target website. Um, hopefully uh, all of you are um, aware of this. And this tool gives advice on when to prescribe antibiotics, in what circumstances, when not, uh, which antibiotics, dose uh, and, and duration. So if we think about the um, uh, prescribing for uh, acute cough and bronchitis, um, then obviously you need to be aware that antibiotics have um, little benefit uh, in uh, comor if there's no uh, significant comorbidities. It's one of those scenarios when a delayed antibiotic script may be very useful um, for patients. Um, patients often can, especially if they've had bad experiences before, um, may be very anxious about not having uh, the um, reassurance of, of having antibiotics. But a delayed prescription, um, we found in uh, research we'll come to, um, about half the patients do not uh, take the antibiotics. So actually there is a significant reduction in antibiotic prescribing with delayed scripts. It's useful for all of your surgery to be uh, aware of the, uh, the guidance and of particularly around the safety netting because this is a really uh, difficult scenario. Um, are patients going to be happy um, with uh, what you're saying um, to them in terms of if you don't give them antibiotics? Now this is a useful slide to uh, show um, and it shows that actually the trust that patients have in um, their GPs and in the um, nurses' uh, um, uh, advice given as well as pharmacists, uh, there is a really high proportion of patients that do trust the advice that's being given. So it's really important that you're aware of that, you're every, all your prescribers are aware of this, um, so that you can feel confident to advise patients not to take antibiotics when they're not needed. Uh, people do respect you as a, um, a source of um, authoritative information. So when you're uh, teaching your patients, when you're educating your patients and persuading them actually when antibiotics are not needed, research has shown that uh, this will actually reduce reconsultation uh, rates. So in other words, if a patient is trained uh, and doesn't expect to get antibiotics at a clinical visit, then they're actually less likely to come back to the surgery and ask for antibiotics in a future, um, in a future infection. I'm well aware of how much um, the workload of GP practices has increased and so anything that can actually reduce your workload, reduce the number of times a patient might want to, to consult has got to be worth uh, 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 pursuing. So, um, there is that data to say there's a reduced consultation rate. Now, you may wonder how your prescribing uh, in your practice is, um, whether it's high or low in, in relation to other um, practices around the country. And data is available, so you can benchmark yourselves. Um, and I think that this is uh, going to be useful to um, all your colleagues, I should think you need to know where you are in relation to the country and in relation to the county. So 
This data, freely available, um, is available on the uh, website that's being uh, given to you there. Um, you can go and look it up um, and share with your colleagues. And if you are high prescribers, then obviously it's going to be worth looking to see why that is. So what do patients do when they have a respiratory tract infection and is there any data on that? Uh, yes, there is. Um, so in terms of um, how patients responded to their illness, uh, you can see you've got data in your packs that show that a third just carried on with their daily uh, activities and routine, 23% uh, took extra rest, 18% um, interestingly took alternative uh, medicines um, and 34% over the, over the counter medicines. Um, 22% contacted or visited their GP surgery. So there's an awful lot of people that uh, are contacting and that could have antibiotics if they all uh, ended up being prescribed uh, when they came to the, the surgery. Um, that doesn't mean to say that um, uh, they, they should be, but it's important to note that there is that quite a large group that will come to a GP surgery as opposed to self-care. It's also very interesting to note that 0.4% took leftover antibiotics um, from previous visits. So that suggests that there is a, an, an education need um, for, for those patients um, not to keep antibiotics and to take them at, at another time. So when they, when they did get to the GP surgery, actually it's interesting to note that a third were there to get help with symptoms. So people are not all coming for antibiotics um, a number of them are just worried um, and want reassurance, want to know the cause, um, or have just always gone to the doctor when they've got those, that constellation of symptoms. So only 38% expected antibiotics. Uh, so it's really important to note that there isn't necessarily that expectation, um, even if you feel it yourselves. So if given uh, delayed prescribing, then what do uh, patients do? Um, 42% reported not taking the antibiotics, and this was acceptable. The data is there to, to show this. Um, so it's a very useful tool to use. Um, hopefully most pra practices are now using delayed term uh, prescribing. And it's interesting to note that uh, uh, other information shows it doesn't actually uh, make a great deal of difference as to whether the delayed script is given at the time and uh, sort of future dated, or whether patients are asked to come back to the surgery and pick up a uh, prescription. Um, as long as there is information that goes with it, either strategy works. For those who don't need antibiotics, the target website has the um, uh, patient information leaflets, the no prescribing leaflets that can be personalised, that have information about the likely duration of symptoms, about self-care, about safety netting as to when to, to seek help if there's a, a problem, and um, information about antibiotics. These are really useful uh, uh, leaflets that have been developed with a number of partners. You may want to have them already printed out in your surgeries, um, but they are freely available from the Target website uh, and they can be downloaded. They can also be downloaded um, via EMIS or System 1 uh, using the codes that are given uh, on these slides. There's also an easy read version of uh, exactly the same information, um, but for patients who may have um, are maybe younger or have uh, uh, difficulties uh, with the, the uh, other form of leaflets in, in a pictorial form um, and easy to understand. Uh, and those are also available um, via eBug and Target. The Target website has uh, audit templates both in Word and Excel. Um, so you can use those templates to audit your practice if you think you, you possibly may be high prescribers, um, then those are useful tools. The Excel uh, template, if you put in the numbers, will actually automatically calculate your prescribing compliance against the national guidance. So it's a really easy to use audit tool, means that you don't have to develop your own um, and it's, it's freely available on the Target website. There are also posters available for display in surgeries. Uh, so it's, a lot of patients are aware that uh, antibiotics should not be taken when they're not needed. But it's useful to have those visual cues to remind them, both in the uh, colourful posters or the videos that can be um, shown in uh, your surgery reception. And there are patient information leaflets on specific topics that can be downloaded. So most patients with acute cough 
do not require antibiotic and uh, antibiotics and reducing antibiotics can actually reduce consultation reduce your workload uh, patients trust you to give reassurance and advice and there are targets national targets um, around uh, prescribing so the QP demands uh, sustained reduction of total antibiotics in primary care uh, as you've got in your information packs and you're probably already aware of that means that you probably need to think about an action plan for the year what can you do to reduce the antibiotic prescribing in your practice safely uh, and actually reduce your, your workload um, and keep your patients uh, safe. So think about the next 12 months, think about the PHE uh, target website uh, tools that are available to you. There are learning uh, tools as well. Um, go onto the website and have a look and think about putting together an action plan for the year as you go out from this session um, to think about reducing antibiotic prescribing, considering the use of point of care CRP and getting that equipment into your surgery so that you can use it um, so for safety netting um, and encourage the a consistency of message across all of your staff so that patients don't go to different prescribers and have a, um, a different threshold for getting antibiotics. It's useful to audit and to re-audit to make sure that your prescribing is in accordance with the national uh, guidance and um, it's especially useful to record the actions if your prescribing is, um, uh, is actually higher than it should be. Um, important to reduce co-moxiclav use and all of those broad spectrum antibiotics um, which are more likely to generate uh, resistance. So target is there for you to use um, and this is uh, particularly useful in those patients for acute cough.